All right, so today we are checking out the HG ELRC Drag Shark. And this is going to be one of the 1S ELRS bind and fly analog freestyle whoop you can get on the market. So it does come with a unique shark look canopy. So you can see right here, it does have a little teeth. So yeah, it's kind of like interesting to see like whoops are actually designed like that. And I kind of like it. So anyway, in this video, I will be showing you how to connect this drag shark to your Express Wireless radio. We will set up the switches, VTX channels, and at the end, we will do some flight tests together. And at the end, you decide if you'd like to add this to your collection. Let's get going. Okay, so before we begin, let's briefly introduce the basic requirements for ExpressLS equipments to bind together, which you are required to have the same ExpressLS firmware on your radio and your drone, which they have to both be on 2.x or both on 3.x to bind together the firmware version. Also, the Drag Shark does come in with a SPI based EOLRS receiver, which means the ExpressLS RX is going to be baked into the flight controller, the AIO. So, all the ExpressLS version and updates whatsoever is going to be managed strictly by Betaflight. And the Drag Shark does come in with Betaflight 4.4, which means it is. Express OLS 3.x. So with this being said, your Express OLS radio is going to be required to be on Express OLS 3.x as well in order for them to bind together. And if you're unsure what Express OLS firmware you have on your radio, check the link below for a detailed guide. All right, so with the basic requirements out of the way, that's the boring part. Let's talk about the binding methods. So you will have three methods to bind this. The first and second method is going to be a little bit easier. And the third one is going to be a little bit more technical, but it's going to be recommended for the long run. Let's basically start the first one. So what you're going to need is you're going to obviously bring out your radio and then you're going to need a small LiPo. This is probably the easiest method that you can get. All right. So first of all, power up your radio first. So if you have an HTX radio, you're going to go into the system and then you're going to go into Express LRS and Ex Express LRS, you basically make sure your pack hair rate is set to 500 because that's the requirement for SPI to bind. And then you're going to scroll down here to the bind button, just the bind right here, just to hold it there. So when we need it, we can press it. Also, this is only going to work if you have the correct versions match. So 3.x has to match with 3.x, okay? So you have to have both has to be on somewhat 3. It can be 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, but it has to be on 3. Point. It has to be on 3 in order for them to bind together. All right, let's plug in the battery. So once you have plugged in the battery, you can see on the little drag shark that on the board right here, uh, I don't see anything you can see. It. There is a little tiny little button, which is a bind button you can press. You just have to hit it. Okay. And then you're going to bind it right here. Okay, right now it should have been bounded together. And if you have your default setting of your radio, Okay, as you can see that everything has been received back. If you have a default setting of a radio, basically OEM, that you didn't change any switches whatsoever, this is going to be your arm switch. So it should be working like this. So you can flip it. You can see that the motors are actually spinning. So, yep. This is basically, if you wanted to go fly, I think you can, that you don't have to continue the guide. But if you are a little bit more curious and wanted to know how to do it in the proper ways, let's basically bring it to the radio. I'm also going to be showing you a second method and also the binding phase method. So the binding phase method is basically you set up a series of code onto the receiver and then you set the exact same code onto your radio. And once you basically power on both, as long as you have the same code and as it's the same firmware, it's going to automatically only bind together without you having to hit the bind button. All right, so let's switch the view to the computer. All right, so we're basically just going to be coming to the computer and what you have to do is to plug in the drone with a USB cable. And basically, yeah, that's, that's the first step. All right, so if you are the person that already knows how to do all of this, you don't have to watch this. You can just simply skip to the end using the timestamps. So yeah, just to make it easier. Okay. All right, so we're switching the scene to my computer. And at the computer side, you're going to be opening beta flight. 
And what you have to do is to hit connect. At our beta flight, all you, we need to do is to go to the receiver tab. So at the receiver tab, you can see that there is another option for you to bind the receiver right here. So you can basically hit this button and basically hit the same button on your radio and it's going to bind together. And as for the set, setting up the binding phrase, SPI base is a lot easier compared to serial base. You just have to come to the beta flight and you can just set it up in the receiver tab. So at the receiver tab, you can see that you have the SPI RX Espresso LS already enabled by default. What you can do right here is you just basically going to be punching the, the binding phrase that you have. So for my binding phrase, it's going to be 654321. And you just have to have the exact same 654321 on your radio in order for them to bind together. You can set up whatever you like as long as both of them matches. And if you don't know how to set up a binding phrase to your radio, also there's going to be a link below to, for you to just go check out the quick tutorial. Once you're done with that, you're just going to hit save and reboot. Okay, so for the next step, I will want you to bring out your radio and basically you're just going to be powering up. So once we have set up the binding phrase, they should automatically already be bound together. And then we're basically going to be jumping back to our computer so we can complete the setup. So same drill, let's go to the receiver tab. So at the receiver tab, you're basically going to be seeing that if you have bounded your radio, they should like you should, you should be seeing stick inputs. So that's the first indication that you will always want to check. And next, let's go to the most tab. So same as my regular videos for buy and fly whoops, there's not going to be a lot of stuff you are required to be doing in order for the drone to work. You just have to make sure that the switches you have set up is going to be working. So let's flip the radio a little bit to this side so you will be able to see it. So the, always, the first, the, always the important portion of these setups are going to be, you want to make sure that your arm switch, uh, mode switch are going to be correct. So for the arm switch, the default is going to be aux one and aux one is going to be this one, but if you wanted to change it very easy. All you have to do is put it on auto and then you just flip it, flip the required switch and it's going to go to that directly. So this is aux one. So you can see that it is basically switching itself to aux one on the screen right here. So what you're essentially trying to do is to make sure the, the little yellow dot goes to the yellow bars. And once it's there, you should be fine. All right. So angle mode, so aux two. So basically at the bottom is going to be angle, middle is going to be horizon, on top is going to be our air mode. And then the beeper, it actually does have a beeper, so it's quite interesting. So beeper is going to be aux four. I believe my aux four is going to be this one. Yes, so aux four is going to activate the beeper, which is very convenient if you actually lost your drone. And basically you just have to beep it and it's going to guide you. You can just follow the sound and then go to find your drone like that. All right, the next step, we're going to go to the video transmitter and we're just basically going to be enabled. The, yeah, so this is already on race band one, my favorite channel. All my stuff are set on race band one, so it's easier. Race band channel one. And then for the power level, let's just set it to 100 for our test. And then you just hit save. All right, so basically that's about it for the bulk of the setup. And now we can switch back to our bench and we're just basically gonna be testing the VTX. So same drill. All right, let's get going. All right, so we're back to the bench and we're always, as always, we're just gonna be testing the VTX using the little monitor is basically same as your analog goggles. So what you have to do is just to make sure you switch it to the correct channel. So this is on R1, so just make sure your little monitor is also on R1. So same goes to your goggles. So we can see that you're getting footage. So this is a very good thing that most of the stuffs are gonna be working. All right, so basically that's a, just a quick test for to make sure the VTX works. And now we can switch our scene to my front yard and we will actually be doing a quick flight test to discuss my initial thoughts about this drone. Let's get going. All right, so we're switching the scene to my front yard and this is actually the second flight for the Drag Shark because the first time I was using some really old BT 2.0 batteries that which resulted a terrible result. No, the flight time was terrible, performance was sluggish. So I actually went online and I ordered some new GMB batteries and these are gonna be the A30 plug. So we're just basically gonna be plugging this in and let's give it a go. I think there's a squirrel or something. Okay. And one thing I like about these batteries that has like basically uh, like leads that is actually coming out like the plug is actually coming like this it's easier to plug in so for this one you don't it's just not going to like the resulting like a little like dangling 
cable around. All right, let's drop this to the floor and let's give it a go. The footage you're seeing right now is coming out from the SkyZone O4 Pro Goggles DVR. So right off the bat, you will feel that the Drake Shark has a pretty good default tuning. So when a Bind of Light Quad has pretty good default tuning, I would say in a sense, it is good. The movement of the drag shard is going to be pretty precise without any surprising overshoot or like saggy movements. This is going to be especially noticeable when you're doing freestyle tricks. Because when you're doing freestyle, if your tuning is not right there, it's just going to give you a headache. Like you just won't be able to complete the stuff like as you wish. So speaking about freestyle, like unlike regular tiny moves that basically have a plastic duck around it and complete built by plastic the drag shark does not have ducks and is mainly constructed with the carbon fiber frame which makes it more durable and supposedly is going to give you better performance because of nut ducting so with the props no longer ducted you're really just going to get most out of these motors and the props making the drag shark probably is going to be a really fun backyard ripper so you can see that hey this thing is just flies like something that is bigger so originally, before I was taking off and a bit before I actually prepared it to fly, I was quite skeptical about the performance due to its heavier weight and thick, bulky TPU canopy. So however, after taking off and punching up, you basically notice the power is just going to be there and the Drake Shark is actually quite nimble by my surprise. So later on, I was thinking about swapping the Byblades props to Triblades to see if you can actually see a performance boost because when you're upgrading to Triblades, theoretically, you should get a little bit more punch outs but you might mess up the tuning so that's going to be a separate video that we're going to be talking about so basically next let's look at the camera so the camera is going to be the Cadex and light which to me is a pretty good budget option for these tiny whoops you get to see most of the details and colors in your goggles which is not bad like for the price consider so obviously if you're going to be pointing the camera to the sun or a bright side it would just always going to be blown out completely white so same as this camera same same for all cameras so all good here next i probably won't be able to show you since i messed up the original sound so this is a voiceover but i can tell you that the quad is super quiet and no one is basically going to and no one is actually going to be noticed the quad is going to be flying around i was like flying around my neighbors and then nobody was actually paying attention so this is especially good for people living in the city like me because when people don't hear you you don't they just don't complain and you get to fly without getting disturbed so next next let's talk about the maintenance the drag shard has most of the components on the plug so if you ever damage anything the repair should be quite simple there are still a few components that probably will require you to solder but i, th I would say it's still it should be a simple job in a sense next the shark shake tpu is heavy but provides tons of supports and protection so making it a good option if you're planning to get this as your first beginner quad i would say also one thing i should mention is that since it is not ducted you could still fly this indoor but i would say outdoor flying is going to probably still be the best place for you to truly enjoy this so if you are a person that wants to like operate this like basically in like indoor indoor environments then this is probably not the best option get a ducted loop all right so that's about it for my first impression flight and if you'd like to check out the drag charts the links are going to be down below any questions or comments please let me know and please subscribe and stay tuned see you in the next one bye for now all right so basically right now it has turned into a search and rescue so uh, come on all right so we got it now it's back.